I feel like absolute shit, y'all. I have a fever, but if I wasn't going to react to these Oscar nominations on time, then I don't know what I'm doing. I'd be fucking shocked if Oppenheimer gets less than 10 nominations. What I really want is Celine Song to show up in Best Directing. We need Greta Lee, please. Quiet Lives, Quiet Eyes in Best Song. I know the Zone of Interest was on a lot of short lists, but I really hope it shows up in editing. Best Picture, I think it's going to be the exact same top 10 in the PGA. Color Purple still might be able to sneak in, and I'm really scared that we're going to get an all-male Best Director lineup. I'm really scared. When we have Greta Gerwig, Celine Song, and Justine Trier in the mix, like, if they vote for Alexander Payne, I'm going to be so fucking pissed off. Let's react to these nominations. Oh, boy. For Best Performance by an Actor in a Supporting Role. Sterling K. Brown, what? American Fiction. Robert De Niro in Killers. Oh of my Blue. God, Charles Melton, please. Charles Melton, please. Robert Downey Jr. in Oppenheimer. Charles Melton, please. Ryan Gosling in Barbie. It's him or Mark Ruffalo. Fuck! And crazy how Robert Downey Jr. is going to win that award, and he's my least favorite of the five. <laughs> <coughs> May, December is not going to get anything. Like, I mean, fucking, if it gets, like, screenplay or Julianne Moore, then, I mean, like, if they watch that movie, the fucking Charles Melton is right there. Look, I'm happy De Niro, Gosling, and Ruffalo got in. Sterling K. Brown is a very inspired choice. I loved American Fiction. I wish he was in it more. They always start with either supporting actor or supporting actress and leave out the person who should win. And it just sets the mood for the whole rest of the nominations. <laughs> Fuck me. Moving right along. Costume design. Maybe the color purple could show up. <clears throat> the nominees for achievement in costume design. Barbie. <laughs> Pillars of the Flower Moon, Napoleon, <laughs> Oppenheimer. Oh, here we go. And poor things. Oppenheimer, Men in Suits. It's the Men in Suits nomination. <laughs> Straight up, the, and, and I mean, you know, Barbie or Poor Things is going to win this award as well as production design. Like they're going to be battling it out. If I could choose, I would want them to split. Give Barbie production design and Poor Things costumes. Because if Emma Stone doesn't win, I don't want Poor Things to go home empty-handed. Because those costumes and production design, it's fucking brilliant. As of right now, Napoleon has more nominations than May-December. <laughs> I swear to fucking God, if it's an all-male director lineup, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. The nominees for Achievement in Makeup and Hairstyling are Golda. Oh man, I gotta watch it. No bow is afraid. Maestro. Or or Last Voyage of the Demeter. Oppenheimer. They didn't want to watch that shit. Four things. And Society <laughs> of the Snow. I need to find a Netflix account to watch it. This year's nominees for Best Live Action Short Film. The After. Invincible. No an Avocado Pit. Night of Fortune. Red, White, and Blue. And The Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar. <laughs> Fucking Wes Anderson just got nominated for a short. Bro, what if that's what they actually finally give him an award for? <laughs> One of his Netflix shorts, which I still haven't seen because I got kicked out of Netflix. <laughs> but now but now I'll be able to see it in a theater when I go to see all the nominated shorts. <laughs> I think it's just on the cusp of like the runtime as well. Like it might be like a few minutes shy of like, you know, not qualifying as a short. I could be wrong though. I, I don't have it off the top of my head. 
for Best Animated Short Film. The nominees are Letter to a Pig. <laughs> 95 Senses, Our Uniform, Jared Hess, Jared Hess, Pashidam, and War Is Over, inspired by the music of John and Yoko. Jared Hess, didn't that guy direct Napoleon Dynamite and Nacho Libre? And now, we have the first of the two award categories honoring writers. Oh, fuck. First, for adapted screenplay, the nominees are... Barbie. American oh, Fiction. Yeah, of course. Written for the screen by Cord Jefferson. Fucking great script. Barbie. Written by Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach. <laughs> Oppenheimer. No Killers of the Flower Moon! Tony McNamara and the zone of interest written by straight up because Barbie moved to adapted one of them had to get knocked out and, the, and if the zone of interest is in screenplay then I mean fuck I, I mean I said earlier I think it's going to be in best picture I mean anatomy of a fall is going to be in original screenplay but it it won't be nominated for international feature, which means the zone of interest is going to win. And hey, I finally saw it yesterday. Great fucking film. Great fucking film. I've been thinking about it, you know, ever since I stepped out of the theater. <laughs> I can't believe Killers of the Flower Moon missed. It sucks. This is a great category. But I mean, shoot, if Barbie ends up winning adapted screenplay, and I mean, Christopher Nolan's going to win director, so... And probably Best Picture, so Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach and Christopher Nolan and Emma Thomas, two great cinema couples, are finally going to win their first Oscars in the same night for Barbenheimer. Yay! <laughs> Whether people think Barbie is the most or least deserving in this category is up to everyone else. <laughs> I'm kind of on the fence because while it might honestly be the worst script of these five like i still think it's great and wouldn't be pissed if it won all right original screenplay please pass lives please pass lives i can't have that miss i can't have it go empty-handed and for original screenplay the nominees are anatomy of a fall screenplay justine Trier and artur harari the Holdovers, written by David Hemmingson. There was a loud fucking cheer in that room. Maestro, written by Bradley Cooper and Josh Singer. The script was scripty. May, December, screenplay by Sammy Birch, story by Sammy Birch and Alex Mechanic. And Past Lives, written by Celine Song. Oh my god! Performance by an actress in a supporting role. Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt in Oppenheimer. Danielle Brooks in The Color Purple. America Ferreira. Jodie Foster. No! Fuck! Now I have to watch Nyad! <laughs> you know, America Ferreira is gonna get fucking trashed because she got nominated here. Did she get nominated for the monologue? Of course she did. Did she eat saying the monologue? She fucking ate. People don't like her performance in that film, and I mean, no Julianne Moore, but Jodie Foster and America Ferreira. May December got in for screenplay, though. I'm fucking shocked. Barbie's gonna get three acting nominations. Good for Divine Joy Randolph and Danielle Brooks. Those two killed it. And and they would probably be the only ones that I would nominate, but... <laughs> oh my god. Wes Anderson getting a short nomination. America Ferreira is now an Oscar nominee. For Barbie. Oh my god. If Bradley Cooper gets in for directing over, like, Greta Gerwig, 
and Celine song. For achievement in music, original song. The fire inside. From you the fucking song. assholes! <laughs> you fucking assholes! You fucking assholes! They nominated Diane Warren for a song about fucking Cheetos! If that means Quiet Eyes misses, oh my god. I haven't heard the song. It might be a good song. I'm fucking triggered though because Diane Warren's song that got nominated last year I thought was terrible. And it shut out the Pinocchio song that I really wanted to get in. Alright, I'm just Ken. Here we go. <clears throat> They're still cheering for Diane Warren for the fucking Cheeto song. It never went away from American Symphony. I want to check out that doc. Wajaji, a song for my people from Killers of the I called it. I fucking called it. And what was I made for from Barbie? <laughs> I fucking called it. Next original score. American fiction. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Killers of the Flower Moon. Oppenheimer. And Poor Things. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I couldn't, I don't remember a single piece of music from that. Yo, American fiction. Straight up, when I when I saw the film, I was like, yo, I might honestly put that on my list for score because it worked it worked exactly how it needed to. Oh my god, so many things missed because they wanted to give John Williams an, a nomination. If it gets nominated for visual effects, fuck off. I mean, like, it's no contest that Oppenheimer's winning this. Deservedly so, but like, <laughs> fuck off. America Ferreira. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I swear to God. It can't be an all-male lineup for, for directing. It can't be. It cannot. Just don't. Three fucking amazing films directed by women that are getting it for Best Picture. Like, eh, nominate two of them. Nominees for Best Documentary Feature Film. Indiana Jones. Bobby Wine, The People's President. American Symphony didn't get in. The Eternal Memory. Four Daughters. To Kill a Tiger. And 20 Days in Mariupol. That might get in for International Feature. documentary short film. The nominees are The ABCs of Book Banning The Barber of Little Rock Island <clears throat> in Between The Last Repair Shop and Nai Nai and Waipo Congrats to the documentary filmmakers. They're doing extraordinary work. The nominees are Io Capitano, Italy. I feel like uh, I forgot Anatomy of a Fall. Perfect I forgot. Days, Japan. Society of the Snow, Spain. I can't wait to see Perfect Days. <clears throat> the Teacher's Lounge, Germany. And the Zone of Interest, United Kingdom. <laughs> No taste of things. Yo, France, you fucked up. You fucked up. Anatomy of a Fall could have won this. You fucked up. Sucks for Fallen Leaves. Short, sweet film. I oh, I want to see Perfect Day so bad. I want to see Perfect Day so bad. Vim Vendors. Still kicking. Way to go. I'm also super excited to see The Teacher's Lounge. And I'll, and I'll try and watch Io Capitano as well, if, if it comes to a theater anywhere. And for Best Animated Feature Film, here are the nominees. 
the boy and the heron. Oh my fucking god. I just realized that Spider-Verse wasn't nominated for score. You fucking assholes. You fucking assholes. You fucking assholes. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny did not need to get an Oscar nomination. You fucking assholes. <sighs> Elemental. Nimona. I need to watch that. Robot Dreams. And Spider-Man. Across the Spider-Verse. <sighs> they just can't. They love Disney and Pixar. Do I think Elemental is a bad film? No. Do I think it's a good film? Not really. I think it's fine. Stellar animation. Good music. But, um... <sighs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant, Ma Mutant Mayhem is, like... <laughs> brilliant. It's hilarious. I want to know how they decided who gets nominated for Spider-Verse because three people directed that movie and only two of the directors are nominated. And the first one, all three of its directors were nominated and won. You know, the cap is five for a nomination, but like, come on. Like, I saw a trailer for Robot Dreams <clears throat> yesterday and uh, it looks cool. So I hope I'm able to see it in theaters. But fucking three people directed Spider-Verse, and one of them didn't get nominated. Sucks for him, because, like, ugh, come on. Such bullshit. Like, I do not want <laughs> Lord Miller to get a fucking Oscar for treating their crew like shit. Disappointing. Disappointing. Here are the nominees for achievement in production design. Barbie. Killers of the Flower Moon. Napoleon. Oppenheimer. And Things. <sighs> uh, Napoleon. For achievement in film editing, the nominees are Anatomy of a Fall. The Holdovers. Oh, no. Oh, no. And poor things. Very rarely does a Best Picture winner not get nominated for editing. Even fucking Green Book was nominated for editing. I mean, obviously Oppenheimer's winning this award, deservedly so, but like... Alexander Payne's getting nominated. Fuck me. Oh, Dominic Sessa didn't come along. That's a shame. But I mean, Charles Melton should have been nominated and won. Uh, I mean, not that I expected Barbie to get nominated for editing, but I'm really scared that she won't get in for directing. Diane Warren seriously got nominated for a fucking Cheeto song. Anatomy of a Fallen editing is great, though. And for achievement in sound, here are the nominees. The Creator. Maestro. Mission Impossible, <laughs> Reckoning, Part 1. No, I'll put my foot in my mouth. Oppenheimer. And The Zone of Interest. Alright, Mission Impossible is the first one to get nominated for an Oscar. Which means now it might be in visual effects. Let me eat my fucking foot. <laughs> I, I mean, I haven't seen the film, but I did not think it would get in at all. At all. Like, they didn't nominate any of the other ones. <laughs> oh, hey, they just officially changed... They just officially scrapped part one off the title. <laughs> but now in the Oscar nominations, it's part one. <laughs> I cannot believe the creator got nominated for sound. What a... What a nothing film. Up and I were in the zone of interest, though. Hey, good for them. No Killers of the Flower Moon. Oh, man. What if they snub Scorsese for Alexander Payne? Oh my god. Next, the nominees for achievement in visual effects. 
They nominate fucking the Indiana Cooter. Jones. Godzilla minus one. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. Mission <sighs> Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part One. And Napoleon. Thank God. Indiana Jones did not get nominated for visual effects. But, like, score? Oh my god, you fucking assholes. John Williams did not need another nomination. My first Godzilla movie to ever be nominated for an Oscar. We might be down to the final four. For achievement in cinematography, oh, the know. nominees are... El Conde. I need Netflix. Killers of the Flower Moon. <laughs> I need Netflix. Oppenheimer <clears throat> and Poor Things. I I can keep going. For performance by an actor in a leading role. Mm -hmm. Bradley Cooper and Maestro. <sighs> Coleman Domingo. Killian Murphy and Oppenheimer and Jeffrey Rush in American Fiction. So I haven't seen um, Rustin yet, but I love Coleman Domingo, and this is the first time in the 2000s that an openly gay actor has been nominated for playing an openly gay role. A whole bunch of times in the 2000s has a straight person won for playing a gay character. Three straight actors last year got nominated for playing queer characters. But, um, Coleman Domingo, this is the first time since Ian McKellen in 1999 to be openly gay and play an openly gay character to get nominated. So, um, my, pi my pick of the other four would probably be Jeffrey Wright, because I just loved him in American Fiction so much, and, um... But we obviously know this is between Paul Giamatti and Killian Murphy. Uh, no surprises here. So many Netflix films. For performance by an actress in a leading role. Annette Benning in Naya. Lily Gladstone in Killers of the Flower Moon. Sandra Julia. Carrie Mulligan in Maestro. And Emma Stone in Portland. You fucking assholes. You fucking assholes. You fucking assholes. You fucking assholes. Does Carrie Mulligan do Oscar acting in that film? Yes. And she's good at doing it. I haven't fucking seen Nyad. So Annette Benning fucking swam to get nominated. And I love Annette Bening and Jodie Foster. They're great actors. Greta Lee deserved to be here. Directing is about to be... Uh, oh my, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Marco Robbie missed. Oh my god. Oh my god. I mean, she'll be nominated as a producer for Best Picture, but oh my god. She got nominated everywhere. She got nominated everywhere. And straight up, I would have thrown her, I would have nominated her. I thought she was great. Her, her comedy and her timing is great in that film. Oh my god. No, straight up, my list would have been Lily Gladstone, Sandra Hewler, Greta Lee, Margot Robbie, and Emma Stone. Oh my god. They can't resist the biopics and the accents and talking about smoking and the arts and all that sort of thing. Achievement in directing. The nominees are Justine Trier, Anatomy of a Fall, Martin Scorsese, Killers of the Flower Moon, Christopher Nolan, Oppenheimer. No fucking maestro. Yorgos Lanthimos, Poor Things, and Jonathan Glazer, The Zone of Interest. Y'all are gonna fucking hate me because 
Christopher Nolan is winning this award, and he's like five on my ranking of this. And I cannot stress enough how much I love that man and his films. I cannot stress enough. I'm so fucking triggered that Greta Gerwig and Celine Song weren't nominated for this. And now for our final category. I can't wait! <laughs> Let's read them together. The nominees for Best Motion Picture of the Year are... American Fiction. Ben LeClaire, Nikos Paramigos, Cora Jefferson, and Jermaine Johnson, Producers. Anatomy of a Fall, Marie Ange Luchani, and David Thune. Barbie. David Heyman, Margot Robbie, Tom Ackerley, and Robbie Brenner, producers. The Holdovers. Mark I just realized, I just realized Alexander Payne was nominated. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Oppenheimer's winning best picture. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god! Bradley Thomas, Martin Scorsese, and Daniel Lupi, producers. Oppenheimer's winning best picture. Maestro, Bradley Cooper, Steven Spielberg, Steven Bernard, Spielberg, Amy Durning, and Christy McCosco Krieger, producers. Oppenheimer, Emma Thomas, Charles Roven, and Christopher Nolan, producers. Past Lives, David Hinojosa, Christine Bashan, and Pamela Koffler, producers. Poor Things, Ed Guiney, Andrew Lowe, Yorgos Lanthimos, and Emma Stone, producers. Emma Stone, double nominated. And The Zone of Interest, James Wilson, producer. <sighs> Easy Best Picture 10 in terms of predictability. Um... Fucking past lives is the women talking of this year, and unfortunately, it's not going to win screenplay because Justine Trier was nominated for directing. So, Anatomy of a Fall is winning original screenplay. Oppenheimer, 13 nominations. It won't be the Benjamin Button. It's winning at least six awards. Poor Things, 11. Killers of the Flower Moon, 10. Killers of the Flower Moon could easily be Scorsese's third film to get 10 nominations and zero wins. Barbie 8, Maestro 7, American Fiction, Anatomy of a Fall, The Holdover, Zone of Interest 5. Napoleon got more nominations than Past Lives, The Creator, Mission Impossible, Nyad, Past Lives, Society of the Snow 2. I mean, we know The Zone of Interest is winning um, international feature. Yo, France, you fucked up. You fucked up. Even though it's probably going to win sc original screenplay, you could have had it win international feature because it got in for directing. I bet they're feeling goofy now. I don't know if Barbie can still win screenplay without directing. And I mean, obviously movies win screenplay without being nominated for directing, but I'm just saying, you know, Barbie, Barbie's a huge film and fucking that adapted screenplay category is stacked. They might give it to American Fiction because we know Barbie's going to win one of the songs. It, it could easily win both costumes and production design. Maybe they'll want to give adapted screenplay to literally anything else so they can spread the love. Poor, I don't know if poor things will win costumes or production design, but I mean, at this rate, Emma Stone might win. And it'll be Yorgos' second film to get 10 plus nominations and only win Actress. Maybe. Maestro is more than likely going to win makeup. I don't see it being anything else, honestly. I'm shocked Napoleon got in for production and design and not makeup and hairstyling. Society of the Snow fucking swooped in and Golda. And I honestly can't believe the creator got nominated for sound. Mission Impossible, two Oscar nominations. And that's two for the whole series. Those fucking assholes nominated John Williams for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. When Spider-Verse was right there. It didn't get visual effects either. Am I happy Past Lives got nominated for Best Picture and Screenplay? Of course I am. But those fucking assholes snubbed Greta Lee. 
I fucking hate them. I fucking hate them. I mean, I might want Sandra Hewler to win. And I mean, Emma Stone and Lily Gladstone are great. Uh, if Celine Song is still somehow able to win screenplay, that would be absolutely insane. I mean, Anatomy of a Fall is one great, a crazy script film, and she was the only woman in for directing, so... Because, I mean, it's not fucking winning international feature, so it might win screenplay, and it would be great. I just love past lives. No All of Us Strangers is sad. No Quiet Eyes and Song is sad, because they love the fucking Cheeto song. No Spider-Verse and score and visual effects is upsetting. But thank God no Alexander Payne in directing. Thank God. <laughs> Annette Benning and Jodie Foster. It's, those are definitely the old farts in the Academy who are still around. Because those are predictable nominations. But shoot, when I watch it, I might be like, oh my god. And Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles missing animated feature. Like, <coughs> they couldn't resist Pixar this year. And I'm excited to check out Robot Dreams. That seemed like a very cool film. Pfft, Wes Anderson getting a short nomination. Fucking hilarious. Jared and Drew Sahesh. Another couple getting nominated. Good for all the couples this year. That's really about all I got. Need to edit this video. Need to get inside. What are your egregious snubs at the Oscars this year? The 96 Oscars. What nominations do you love? There is some good stuff here. Another anime uh, getting some Oscar representation. I don't know what video I'm doing next, but um, I'll see you when it comes out. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, stay warm. And, uh, see you later.